Last year alone, we lost over 100,000 young people to deaths from drugs like fentanyl because we have an open southern border. Everybody should be appalled by that stat. The fact that more than 100 of our youngest, best and brightest kids are dead in America because of the fentanyl coming across of our open southern yeah, totally. That's where it's coming from. Except, like, it's not coming over the border, dumbass. It's coming over through regular ports of entry. So maybe we should fucking control that a little bit better. Until either the president takes action, which he won't, or we pass legislation on the floor to fix those problems. But that doesn't start until we elect Kevin McCarthy as our speaker. We know what the challenges are. We've laid out solutions to these problems. It's sad to say these aren't problems that are very hard to fix because we weren't in this situation just a few years ago. But if the administration doesn't want to fix these problems, people call on us to do that. And it starts here in the people's house. Let's rise to this challenge. Let's meet the challenges that the American people sent to all of us, not just the Republicans, not just the Democrats, but all 434, <laughs> soon to be 435 oh. of us. We can meet those challenges, but let's start by electing Kevin McCarthy as our next speaker. I yield back. <laughs> this is fire actually fire I love this so much for what purpose does the gentleman from California ride do you think the fentanyl scare tactics are intended to take the blame out the sacrifice friendly no it's just the way to fear monger about immigrants for unity in con congress and progress in our country democrats are united behind Hakeem Jeffries. I recommend Hakeem Jeffries as our speaker. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It sucks because, like, I despise Hakeem Jeffries so much, okay? Obviously because, you know... I hate to see a black man thrive. That's what it is because I'm a racist and not because he is like the worst kind of neoliberal shill who has shown open dis uh, disdain for the progressive wing of uh, the party. Um, for what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Seek place a name and a nomination, Speaker. The gentleman is recognized. So this is what the chamber looks like when we're actually debating and the bodies are in the chairs. How many times have we been down here giving speeches and there's not a soul in the chamber? Yet this is what it takes to get 440, 435 people in the chamber. He's, and have an actual oh, I love it, dude. I love it. They're all doing their own fucking West Wing speeches. And that's a good thing. What we're doing is exercising our rights to vote and have a debate and have a discussion about the future of this country through the decision of choosing a speaker. This is not personal. It's not. This is about the future of the country. This is about the direction of the country. American people who are looking at this body and wondering why we can pass $1.7 trillion bills that are unpaid for. They can just slide in $45 billion for Ukraine but not pay for it. $40 billion for emergency spending and not pay for it. 10% increase in defense spending. 6% increase in non-defense spending and not pay for it and not do a thing except put language in a bill that prohibits our ability to use the money to secure the border. <laughs> the get uh, dude, can you imagine being this passionate about healthcare? Like, God, this is the worst country on the planet, dude. Literally the worst country. We are such fucking scumbags, dude. We are so bad as a nation we deserve less. We do. We don't have anything anyway, but like we deserve even less than what we have. Look at our fucking elective, elected representatives, dog. We are never getting health care, bro. Sends it to the floor, and we have no debate on the floor of this body. We haven't been able to offer an amendment on the floor of this body. <laughs> he said he's border Sanders. <laughs> what this nation needs is a stronger border. Fuck the health care. Poor people should be melted into biofuel. Opting rules and procedures that will make us actually do our job, or it comes from... And people ask me, what do you want? 
I want the tools or I want the leadership to stop the swamp from running over the average American every single day. We can't keep doing this. I'm going to sit here until we figure out how to stop spending money we don't have. I don't want any more empty promises. I don't want any more, oh, don't worry, trust us, we'll do it. I want to know that we're going to be able to exercise our rights as a member of this body to stand up for the American people and actually fix this country. And it's not going to happen when we use our men and women in uniform in defense and wrap ourselves around that and then spend more money that we don't have, weakening that defense, weakening our country in the process. But that's what we just did. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am asking for us to come together and figure out how to solve these problems. Like, people... people the the idea that like we can we're giving so much money to Ukraine and not to our own borders is such a dumb one because like republicans are on board with giving money to Ukraine hey dumbass like they have like naval bases in their own uh districts they have like defense spending that is going to benefit their own constituents so they're like shut the fuck up okay like yeah sure it's only like a few people that don't i guess uh have uh you know some kind of constituency that uh that benefits like uh, where whatever like the military industrial complex is like getting money they they benefit from it so they're the ones who are chirping about like border security but like ultimately it's you know everybody loves that shit everybody eats it up that's why there's bipartisan uh unity when it comes to that He did attempt to address both sides. No, he didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? He literally said, why are we giving billions of dollars to Ukraine and not the border? That's not a both sides situation. He just, that's like a, a made up problem. Adams. Adams. Jeffries, Adderholt, McCarthy, Aguilar, Jeffries, Alford. Would I be happy if Hakeem Jeffries became speaker? I mean, it'd be really funny. So, like, that's good. If you were speaker, would you stream it? Yeah. Who would be the funniest speaker? Clay Higgins. Clay Higgins. Clay Higgins. Clay, Clay unfaithful Jebediah Higgins. Or Donald Trump. Donald Trump would be pretty good too. Donald Trump would be a pretty funny one. Uh, but like I said, Clay Higgins, Donald Trump, I don't know. I mean, you could have like pretty much anyone be the speaker, so it doesn't really matter. But like as far as like, you know, people that are, Currently in that room, I think Clay Higgins will be great. George Santos could be really funny. Yeah, George Santos is a good one. Let's get Herschel in there. Oh, let's watch what Fox News is saying right now. I want to see what the fuck they're saying because they're pissed. Ben McCarthy by name on the floor. There were 19 votes against him by name for somebody else, Andy Biggs and Byron Donalds and a couple of others. They're on pissed. The first vote, all 19 of those members then went to Jim Jordan. Now, as we went to the third vote here, it was a question as to whether or not they would place somebody else's name in nomination for the third vote. And that's exactly what Chip Roy, the Republican from Texas, did. Again, Jim Jordan. So this is where we are. This is the third vote. They will go through the list alphabetically. And the rule is they have to keep voting until they get a speaker. Now, we should watch this time if there is any attrition from the uh, number of votes that Jim Jordan got. Uh, that's something to keep in mind, uh, whether or not they go to a fourth vote, whether or not they might have a recess and actually have people go back and, and start to horse trade and things. But again, the universe of people, we have three names in nomination. Hakeem Jeffries, the Democrat. From Alex Brooklyn, Jones would be goaded. Got more votes than Kevin McCarthy on the last vote there. The vote was 212 for Jeffries, 203 for Kevin McCarthy and 19 for Jim Jordan. 
And, and I want to go to something here. So Matt Gates is a Republican from Florida who nominated Jim Jordan the last time. Now, I am told that if you are nominated, you cannot withdraw your name. This is unprecedented in House history. And if somebody puts your name in nomination, it's there, even if you don't want the job. Jim Jordan does not want the job. But this is what Matt Gates said in his nominating speech a little bit ago. Listen. I'm nominating Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan is humble, perhaps today, humble to a fault. Maybe the right person for the job of Speaker of the House isn't someone who wants it so bad. Maybe the right person for the job of Speaker of the House isn't someone who has sold shares of themselves for more than a decade to get it. So the key here is you can't uh, beat somebody with nobody. This group of conservatives, they have somebody. They've apparently settled on Jim Jordan, Andy Biggs, who got several votes, the most votes, uh, besides Hakeem Jeffries and, uh, and also Kevin McCarthy on the first round. He dropped out. So Jim Jordan is who they're kind of coalescing about. But again, it's still just enough votes to keep Kevin McCarthy from getting over that delta to become the Speaker of the House. Back to you. You know, Chad, I'm noticing in the others column here, if you think about it, uh, Kevin McCarthy can't lose more than four uh, votes. I know there's four Republicans. Um, at this stage, there are three others, and uh, it is very likely he's on route to losing a third, a third round here. Why do they um, hate Kevin McCarthy? It's just, okay, you guys forgot, okay? It's because they're the Freedom Caucus. They don't even, I, I don't even think they hate Kevin McCarthy like that. It's just, it's more so about wanting to, uh, it's more so about wanting to basically obstruct. So the Freedom Caucus has been around for a while. Uh, their entire purpose is to literally constantly say like, we got, we need a tighter budget. We need a tighter budget. Mostly just to, you know, push for deregulation and tax cuts, but... They're the small government uh, the weirdos inside of the... Oh. Four others already. Um, they're the, they are the... They are the small government weirdos that, like, basically stop every fucking bill from pushing through. They're basically, like... The Republicans inside of the Republican Party. Like, the entire Republican strategy against the Democratic Party is obstruction, right? With, like, no real purpose. Well, that's pretty much the exact same thing for the Freedom Caucus. Like, they're just doing more Republican shit against the Republicans. Gates asked AOC about McCarthy's claim that he had cut a deal with the Dems, which she categorically denies. Gozar asked AOC about the possibility of Dems supporting an adjournment motion, which she was noncommittal. Oh, nice. That if you go off somewhere or, or, or skip out on a vote, that lowers the total necessary, certainly for Kevin McCarthy. He needs half plus one, right? Right. That, that's, a, you know, pretty Machiavellian. You know, that's a, a page right out of the playbook from LBJ. He used to send senators off on trips and things when he <laughs> didn't need their vote or didn't want them to vote on something. And then all of a sudden he would, he would give them this plum assignment. And then, lo and behold, they weren't there to vote on the key issue. And LBJ, when he was the Senate majority leader, would win the vote. Now, so far, we've not seen, uh, you know, that level of calculus from Kevin McCarthy or anybody else. But this is where I've talked about this being the Stockholm syndrome. They want people to stay near the chamber, wear them down, and after a while, maybe they start to agree with their captors. But again, how you get that group of 19 to move, and if there's LeBron any James is speaker, you know, would I've be been fire. Told all afternoon that that group of people is more emboldened than they were La a couple of La legislation. Days ago. That group is bigger than we thought. We thought, you know, there might be 10 to 12. We thought it might be five or six. There were the five publicly uh, who were against Kevin McCarthy, Matt Rosendale of Montana, and Ralph Norman from Georgia, you know, a few others, South Carolina. We had a number of people who were saying there that, oh, you know, that was a smaller universe and it might creep a little bigger. 19 might be really hard to overcome. And this is the other point here. Kevin McCarthy did not have the votes uh, to be speaker to succeed uh, John Boehner in 2015. Everybody thought it was a fait accompli. And the next thing you know, he didn't have the votes and he stepped away. 
And this is where we wound up with Paul Ryan, somebody who said he did not want to be Speaker of the House. You know, I'm looking at this. We're at the other four. You can't afford, if you're Kevin McCarthy and want to get a chance at leading uh, the House of Representatives, uh, you can't get a single congressman or woman over that level. And yet he is on that brink. Uh, now, we can go through this process again and again and again. It reminded me in the past, and you've done all the way back to 1856, it took 133 ballots before Nathaniel Banks, a Republican of Massachusetts, had secured the job. But nothing else could be done until that was settled. Could we be looking at something like that? We don't know that it's going to take two months, but this is where the argument from the Republicans is going to be, we can't even constitute our committees, we can't start trying to cut spending, we can't start investigations into the Biden White House, we can't start working on energy prices. I'm you know, sorry, Kevin McCarthy, Chad, I'm interrupting you again. We're at six now, so he's failed to do it. On, unless there right. are some Democrats who swing his way, unlikely, as you pointed out. But go ahead, my friend. In other words, he has failed a third vote. Kevin McCarthy right, exactly. will have to hope yeah, for a yeah. fourth vote, but go ahead. Right. No, this is, the, this is the parliamentary math in real time, that every time you see that number start to creep up above four, you know you're going to another ballot. So probably in the next hour and a half here, they will go to that, to that next ballot, uh, a fourth vote here for a Speaker of the House. Uh, and we're starting to creep closer to that nine-vote uh, tally that we had in 1923 to reelect Speaker Gillette. That took three days to work that out. But my earlier point was this, Neil is that Republicans are going to start really hammering these 19, saying we can't do all the things that we promised our voters that we were going to do. Uh, you know, none of that was going to happen. How many times did you hear from Republicans on the campaign trail saying, oh, we are going to, you know, pass a bill to get rid of these 87,000 IRS agents that the Democrats wanted to hire? That's not going to happen today. That's already a broken campaign promise because they're not going to be able to put that bill on the floor. And this might portend danger for Republicans governing over the next couple of years because they only have a four-seat majority. Uh, are they going to be able to pluck off some Democrats when it goes to funding the government at the end of September, raising the debt ceiling, uh, passing their run-of-the-mill uh, you know, bill that they like, something on abortion that's important to Republicans, or if uh, some conservatives try to impeach Alejandro... Aiden Ross is House uh, They are just not going to have the votes. If you can't you know, peel off 19 people to vote for Speaker of the House... Uh, you're not going to be able to pass things with these narrow majorities. And whether you like Nancy Pelosi or not, that was her calling card for decades, passing big bills, winning these big votes with the uh, tight margins. And in the past two years, Chuck Schumer, the Democrat... I don't think Aiden Ross... Uh, here's a, here is a, I guess, controversial hot take that's not so controversial when you think about it. I don't think Aiden Ross knows less about how American politics works than the average fucking congressperson. Straight up. Like, those motherfuckers are dumb as shit, bro. They're not... It's not like they're smart. Their staffers do most of the work. From above the Vatican. There's no such signal here except the running count. But we do know that in that selection process... They go through several people. One person doesn't have enough votes. We're going to try again and see if he gets more votes. And on and on we go. What's the process here? Could you see still early on a little bit of shifting going on? All right, we're going nowhere with Kevin. Um, Scalise seems to be determined not to be considered for the job himself. So too Congressman Jordan. Where does the shifting and when does the shifting begin? It probably would start tonight. And using your papal analogy there, you know, I would expect some sort of a conclave at some point. Uh, this is where Republicans would all get in a room. And this is what they did this morning and talk or at least go in and talk to these 19 and say, what can we you know, offer here? Now, you had some moderate Republicans. You had people like uh, Dusty Johnson uh, from South, uh, South Dakota. You had Stephanie Bice, a uh, Republican of Oklahoma. Uh, you know, they are a little bit more on the moderate uh, strand of the Republican Party. And they claim that this group continues to move the goalposts. It also says this, and I asked them, and I also asked Kevin McCarthy this this morning, if you continue uh, to say, okay, we're going to get the votes, and he's been saying this since November, and you get right up to, you know, election day here, start of the Congress, January 3rd, and they don't have the votes, what does that say about Kevin McCarthy's viability to be Speaker of the House? And when it comes to be September to fund the government or in the next couple of months raise the debt ceiling, how does he get the Jeffrey's got majority twice. Together? Why isn't that enough? Kevin you need 218 votes, brother. Shown the Doesn't matter. To do this. And this is where I go back to the fall of 2015 
when John Boehner stepped aside and we thought Kevin McCarthy was going to be speaker and then all of a sudden he wasn't. He did not have the votes then and he may not have the votes now. Neil, what we are seeing right now in uh, It's not majority, is sorry. Uh, you're, you, you need 218. Uh, the, uh, Jeffrey's only got plurality, not majority. Behind closed doors seven years ago, it has now spilled out into the public view. McCarthy. All right, thank you, my friend. And don't wander too far. I want to go to Aisha Hosty right now, our congressional correspondent, also on Capitol Hill. Aisha, we're learning that Republican congressman from Florida, Byron Donalds, who had supported Kevin McCarthy on the first two votes, I believe, uh, and Sam, correct me, my producer, if you can. Uh, he did vote for Congressman Jordan this go round. Jim Jordan. Now, it's it's yeah. old, it's a little early here, but that's the kind of thing you look for, right? I mean, yeah. what are you what are you learning? I was actually just going to raise that point, and um, very smart of you to bring that up as well. I'm really curious as to what is happening now around Jim Jordan. Of course, he got about 19 votes in the second round. We'll wait and see and watch how many votes he gets this time around. But my question then becomes, Neil, will these... Uh, never McCarthy folks, right? The people who are anti-McCarthy, will they hold Jim Jordan to the same concessions that they have been uh, putting forth to uh, Kevin McCarthy? I think it's a fair question for Chip Roy or Matt Gates or whoever is voting against McCarthy because they're nominating Jordan now without getting a deal that they were hoping to get with McCarthy. And I just like the chaos. I don't give a me. shit. It doesn't uh, matter really to me if Jim Jordan is the fucking speaker of the really house. About the committee it does not matter if it's changes, fucking Matt Gates. Et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? It's just like it doesn't matter that you haven't struck a deal with yet. So perhaps ultimately later on tonight. As ultimately, it doesn't court. matter because Republicans don't have an agenda. They do not have an agenda. They got nothing. Wait, what the fuck? Where is this? Oh, this is still. Like, whoever whoever is the speaker is going to, you know, launch a fuckload of uh, investigations on Hunter Biden's cock. We all know that, which is going to be super sweet because he's got a nice one. Okay. Every American is going to see it and go, oh, wow. What a nice cock he has, right? That's pretty much what's happening here. That's pretty much what they're going for. So, who gives a shit? They want to get to work. And you heard him talk about that again when he nominated uh, Kevin McCarthy. Some of those priorities, Neil. 218 include, is the vote. Uh, the uh, is the number of, of votes that necessary. Democrats approve for the IRS. Um, it includes mm. blocking any non emergency drawdowns from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. It includes creating a select committee on China. And it includes giving the Department of Homeland Security the power to turn away migrants at the border if they feel like the secretary doesn't have operational control. Control. These are all priorities that Kevin McCarthy laid out in his commitment to America plan. And again, they can only happen once the GOP elects a speaker. Of course, the opposing side would say they are doing exactly what Americans want them to do. This is the democratic process. And that's correct. This is the democratic process. This is the sausage making that we're all watching. Yeah. Oh, uh, you can win with less votes as long as there is, uh, as long as there's less people, uh, that too. Right now, they just need 218. Um, but I don't. I personally don't know what will happen if they just can't vote for someone. What do I know? But it seems to me that some Democrats are taking a walk so McCarthy wins without having anything close to a majority support in the House would be throwing your opponent an anvil. House Democratic leadership sources told me they're working to keep everyone here as long as the House is voting for Speaker and they believe they won't have a problem doing that. What do I know? But it seems to me that some Democrats taking a, are taking a walk so McCarthy wins without having anything close to a majority support in the House would be throwing your opponent an anvil. But if McCarthy is a Speaker, they would still be in disarray. Nothing would be resolved. Nope. Drag it out. I disagree. I actually disagree with David Dan on this. No, drag it out. It looks good. Drag it out for as long as you can. Drag that shit out, dude. What the fuck? It just makes them look awful. 
This makes it look like they don't have their, their ducks in a row. They don't have their shit together. Hold the fucking line for once, goddammit. I've been talking with staffers who are telling me this is insane. This is absolutely insane. At least the GOP staffers are saying that this is making them look like idiots, one staffer told me um, in front of the American people. So I don't think it's likely. I think, I think again, people like Jim Jordan, Steve Scalise, those are names to watch. Um, I, uh, Chad kind of mentioned taking us back to the last time um, McCarthy was up for his a speakership bid. And then we saw, obviously, what happened. He didn't get it. Paul Ryan came in, uh, a reluctant speaker. I think that's what we have to keep an eye on. Are we going to see a reluctant speaker once again uh, lead the GOP conference? You know, and we've seen reluctant leaders picked out of nowhere. I kept saying, and I didn't mean to joke, but just to mention how similar they were to the way uh, cardinals who gather after a pope's death to select his successor. And that cardinal electors who entered the Sistine Chapel in March of 2013 to find a, a successor to John Paul II had five ballots over two days before they elected Cardinal Jorge yeah. Mario Braglia, of course, who later went on to take the name Francis. I only mention that to say that, to me, it's weird uh, I, I, how similar the process is. Movement and, and li those who... Yeah. Ben like Shapiro is honors, correct. Who don't... And it's awesome. McCarthy's job as speaker and the job of the GOP is to say no. Okay, which, by the way, again, ew, gross. Like, the fact that he's smarter than this and admits it makes him more evil, I think, than the average Republican voter who's just stupid and don't understand that this is, like, literally their job. But he is right. That's it. Since Dems control the Senate and the White House. What is the actual policy advanced by stalling him here, other than hand Dems a PR win by depicting the House GOP as a clown show? Really, explain it to me. Who is the alternative who will lead Republicans to a brighter future? What is the policy objective sought? How are Americans helped? You don't have to be a McCarthy fan to ask a simple question. What is your actual plan here, you guys? It is. He's right. That is what's going on. Shut the fuck up, Ben. Luckily, nobody cares about your takes. Doors, right? We don't get to see the chaos. Except, like, imagine being so fucking callous at just saying, like, your job is to just say no. Really? Is that your job? Because I thought in theory your job was to like do good by your constituents. Your job is to just say no is literally just a, an admission that your job is obstructionist and you don't give a fuck about the constituents at all. I hate that. Anyway, let's, uh, here is, here is uh, Daniel Jebediah Crenshaw telling CNN that hardline Republicans won't vote for Kevin McCarthy are enemies now. Uh, very clearly looking for notoriety over principle. That, that's what it is. And anyone who suggests differently is um, in, in, in some kind of make believe fantasy reality. It's not. It's not true. They lost those debates. That should have been the end of it because that's how a team works, right? You hash this stuff out, you figure it out, and then you move on. But if you're a narcissist, if you're a narcissist and you believe that you're you're a narcissist, opinion is so much more important than everyone else's, then you'll keep going, and you'll threaten to tear down the team for for the benefit of the Democrats just because of your own sense of self-importance. That's exactly what's happening here. We will not vote for anyone else but McCarthy. These people think they're stubborn or more stubborn. And they think they're not going to get the committees they want. Well, obviously they won't. But it's going to be so much worse than that. You know, they are enemies now. They have, they have made it clear that they prefer a Democrat agenda than a Republican one. But right now, those conservative hardliners are not going anywhere. They say... I love it. McCarthy down a vote now. GOP leader Kevin McCarthy loses his first vote. Florida representative Byron Donalds votes for Jordan. Let's go! Yo, it's so funny, dude. Oh, no. Yo, this could take months, okay? Which I am so on board with. It's not like... Because understand that it's not like anything is going to happen. Like, if Kevin McCarthy becomes speaker they're going to do obstruction. If Kevin McCarthy is not speaker, they're still going to do obstruction. If Jim Jordan becomes speaker, they're still going to literally block everything they can. So ultimately, like, it, it, it really doesn't matter. They could just, like, keep this going for as long as possible. I personally think it's cool that, like, you know, all these fucking pieces of shit are forced into this room now. 
and they have to sit around with their thumbs in their asses, you know what I mean? We need to find a solution. The, the, the conference, the Republican conference, elected Kevin McCarthy by an overwhelming majority, and we need to elect Kevin McCarthy as a speaker, uh, and we need to move on with America's business, the, the business that America and Americans voted us to do, to reduce inflation, to take care of the energy crisis, to, to also to solve the crisis at the southern border, to stop the flow of fentanyl that's killing tens of thousands of Americans every single year. That's the business that we came here to do, not fight with each other and it's really unfortunate that we have a small percentage of Republicans that really are you know stopping us from doing America's work right now you know it's a fascinating process and you mentioned that the, the, the 90 percent of Republicans who, who who want Kevin McCarthy unfortunately to get to that 218 whether you're at 90 percent or not and you're not there you're not there and, and to go back to my probably ridiculous analogy on uh, conclaves and cardinals gathering. I might point out that, that, that the original first vote for and then ultimately came Pope Francis was that he had barely a dozen votes and the front runner. Oh my god, he keeps going back to the papacy, dude. Who gives a fuck? Shut up. Dude, that oh my god, dude. This guy really loves the Pope. What the fuck? Yo, someone investigate. Check him PC, bro. What the fuck? Republicans have been waiting years for this opportunity to take over the house. And so when the rest of the country looks at how Republicans are hand handling day one, they can't unite. They can't come together. It's, it's day one and they can't agree already. Yeah, that's a shame. It makes us look foolish. I, if I didn't know any better, it, it's like the Democrats paid these people off. Hey, let's pay them <laughs> off. Let, let's make it look like the Republicans can't govern and don't deserve any gavels whatsoever. That's what it makes it look like. Wait. <laughs> Stop his little pout and his little outfit. He's so soft and tiny. I can't. We are going to baby girl. Republicans look bad. 133 times they voted. So they got 100 more times to go. It's so funny how we've made so much history over the last four plus years and how incredibly boring this is. Yeah, bro. They did a January 6th happened. Like that shit was way more fun than this. Okay. Like actually way more fucking fun than this shit. Uh, this was a cool one. How does this end when Kevin McCarthy secures 213 votes, one more than Hakeem Jeffries? To those Republicans who suggest it is better to have Hakeem Jeffries as speaker, you must understand this means backing policies like D.C. statehood, Puerto Rican statehood, abolishing the electoral college, packing the Supreme Court, continued broken borders. First of all, hey, dumbass, there was a fucking majority already. You know what I mean? And it didn't work. Uh, even a Democratic I gotta, speaker. I gotta fucking I can tell you grab that my There is no quick. indication right now that that's going to happen. Uh, but the other thing we hear from... Uh, it's just like, he, look Kevin at all the good things that might happen, but like, it, it won't happen. You want to know why? Because they already fucking said that they... They already had a majority, and it didn't happen. So why would it happen this time around? The House. You so can't dumb. put the rules together. So right now there are technically no rules on the House floor. You can't set up committees. You can't pass legislation. And there's a lot of day one pieces of legislation specifically that Republicans said they wanted to pass as soon as they took power. All of that is on pause right now as this battle for Speaker of the House plays out and drags on. And the more ballots that go, the more that pushes any GOP priorities further and further down the road because they've got to settle their first problem, which is who's going to lead them. And right now, Kevin McCarthy still wants that to be him. He's showing no signs of backing down, but certainly he does not have anything near the votes right now. Representative Lauren Boebert's walking by me. Representative Boebert, is there anything Kevin McCarthy could do to earn your vote? You haven't heard anything from him, Any, but anything he could do? She said she hadn't heard anything from him. The indication she just gave me was no. Forgive me for that live moment of reporting. But there you go. One of the holdout votes saying, at least from her, there's nothing she's heard from Kim McCarthy uh, to work to earn her vote. And she's one of those 20 who's trying uh, or, or is against Kevin McCarthy now. I'll tell you what, uh, Jay, if they're coming in and out of uh, chambers there, uh, coming off the floor and passing by, grab them. Uh, that's what we love about live TV. You're the best one to do it. Uh, so please, um, we would love to get comment from anybody uh, that's been there uh, for this for this third round of the speaker vote. Uh, also, ABC News political director Rick Klein has been watching all of this. And, and just considering what Jay just said, Rick, I mean, this has to be an embarrassment for the GOP. I mean, they're just not on the same page here. 
Yeah, this is a debacle. It's a worst case scenario uh, to open up what should be a day of triumph, a day of doing the easy stuff, uh, just electing a leader after um, grappling with the disappointments the last couple of months. This was the day where they just get to go they in there. They should bully and, more. Uh, Why are the they bullying less? Instead, they should be bullying these motherfuckers more, chaos, I think. Uh, with no real end in sight. And Kevin McCarthy, by the numbers that are on the screen right below me, uh, moving in the wrong direction. Uh, the, the only change in a vote has been an extra vote uh, that went against him. Uh, it could have been worse, uh, and maybe there's some comfort in McCarthy knowing that he's got that many people strongly on his side, but for the other side, that all they need to do is hold hold out five votes to deny McCarthy the speakership. It's hard to look at what's transpired the last couple hours and not realize that they've got at least that, if not quite a bit more. And I think the McCarthy strategy of going ahead with this vote after vote uh, it, it raises a question about whether he had another plan in mind here that he hasn't hatched yet, or whether they're going to have to, to reassess. I'll repeat what I said earlier, which is that the possibility of a break in the action has to be appealing to some folks. I'm not sure who it's good for or bad for, though. Uh, if, it, if, if it leaves McCarthy twisting in the wind and the Republicans without a House Speaker, that may not be good. Uh, testing the stamina of the other side might be part of the yes, strategy. Yes, the 20 holdouts are cashing uh, for clout, yes. There, there's a possibility of a deal cut with another name involved, but it, it's hard to see what else Kevin McCarthy can give short of surrendering the possibility of, uh, of, a, of a speakership uh, ending at a moment's notice by giving that power to any one member to call up that vote. That's the thing he's wanted to avoid. That's what he knows uh, would be the, the ultimate uh, win for Matt Gates and some of the, the holdouts on this. Uh, it seems like a process thing, but it's an important one if it gets down to governing. But there's no scenario that's a good one here for Republicans as, uh, as we enter now. It's just an un absolutely unprecedented fourth round of voting that's likely to come. And how long is it going to last? Will we go into five, six, seven? Who knows? Former Republican Congressman for Virginia, Barbara Comstock, uh, joining us now. A third vote, now lost, no speaker yet. Is there anybody that can bring Republicans together at this point, Barbara? Well, I think what is keeping the Kevin McCarthy Republicans together is mutual loathing of people like uh, Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert. And Gosar, I mean, these are the members of Congress who are always thinkers uh, and don't get anything done. So I do think uh, staying united against those 19, I mean, I know it's now 20, but um, they aren't gathering any steam either and they don't have a plan. So I do think that, you know, the safety in numbers and as they just stay committed to, hey, we're going to ride this out. now. If the members aren't sworn in yet, what I'm not sure of, I don't know technically, do they even get paid for today? You know, uh, you know what, what happens if oh, you go no. through these days and nothing's, you're not sworn in, you start talking about... Oh no, what if they don't get paid for today? Oh no. Their $174,000 salary might be compromised. Kevin needs to do, because at this point, for the sake of the institution, he certainly has nothing more he can bargain with, with these dead-enders um, and these anti-institutionalists. So that is, I think, what they have to keep doing. So Unless he decides to and give it to somebody else and put all of his people behind some type of consensus candidate, but then you're letting those 19... So, Barbara, if you were there right now on the floor uh, and you were voting today, if you had a chance to talk to Kevin McCarthy, what would you tell him right now? Oh, boy. Well, I mean, I, I would have, long before now, I would have not wanted him to be dealing with, with these people and empowering them. I mean, back in 2015 and 16 and 17 when I was there, I didn't want these people empowered. So that is the problem that they have been empowered. So I think now is the time to stop this, uh, the bleeding, because it is just causing, it's, it's bad for the institution, it's bad for Republicans, and uh, the only way to stop it is to just, you know, draw the line and say we're not going any further and we're not going to cave to these guys. Let's bring in former Democratic senator from North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp. And Heidi, it, it seems like, you know, McCarthy has played all his cards. So what do you think he needs to do now? Well, I, I think the card that he continues to play is, I'm going to sit here until you come my way. 
and you know we'll see if he takes this to a fourth ballot he lost one vote that's not good um, but it wasn't a landslide against him and so how many people who are supporting him are now coming to him saying it's time for you to come to a plan b you don't see that on the floor you see kevin uh checking his uh his cell phone to uh, ensure he's communicating with a lot of his supporters who knows what's being said but if you're him the only control you have right now is control there's no over fucking the floor, shot and he can keep people voting imagine Unless five people are able to successfully the swing the entire vote. republican party what that'd I be so insane watching the floor action is it seems like the democrats are trying to come up with a strategy they aren't just sitting and being passive you see the leader uh jeffrey's talking to his staff, talking to other members, talking to Jim Claiborne. We'll see if something comes from that. But what I would expect is is what uh, uh, McCarthy will do is simply sit in that chair, take another vote, see if they nominate someone else. You can say, look, you know, you already lost. But you know who the big loser is? It's Jim Jordan. He's gotten 20 votes. And I, you know, just to put this in perspective, it would be like six Democrats on Jesus the Senate Christ. side selecting the majority leader. Um, that the anomaly here is the Speaker of the House is that, that the leadership is voted by Look the at when he called body, this November 22nd. Caucus, but if this were a caucus vote, clearly uh, uh, Leader McConnell would be the Speaker of the House. And so, you know, he's got time on his side. He can sit there and just keep taking these votes and frustrate the other side. They also have time on their side. So the question is, when does it break? Who, who blinks first and who comes across the table to talk first? And what do you think, Heidi, of this tweet that Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene put out and also told our Jay O'Brien that this is, you know, Republicans playing Russian roulette with their hard-earned Republican majority right? Well, number one, you know, first impressions are everything. This is the first impression of House leadership. It's not good. The public is watching this saying they can't even agree among themselves. And so she's not wrong. I, I think I think it, there's a tendency to always be a little overly dramatic on one day's events. This may look different in a week, but I, I think at this point, first impressions matter. And the first impressions of the new House leadership is not very good in the American public side. Yeah, I mean, the question is if indeed this, you know, Kevin McCarthy battles this out, he ends up, who knows, going to fourth, fifth, sixth, fifth. we don't know how many votes, right? But does uh, win, kind of like the last person standing here. Um, they brought you know, Steve Kornacki the on? Is, how is he going to hold the party together? I mean, we've already talked about the fact that you said he's already not respected. He may be a nice guy and well-liked by people, not, not respected. Uh, a lot of uh, members using the word embarrassment, uh, this, whole, this whole scene today. Um, it, it just seems like he's going to just continue to have an even more difficult time leading, uh, inspiring, moving forward. Well, I, I think, I think, you know, and I've said this already um, during the last four hours that we've been talking, I think him standing firm actually wins him some points. I think him not capitulating, not compromising, as Barbara was saying, you know, not letting that that small minority of his caucus win, I think that helps build. If he can come out of this victorious, I think, I think that... Uh, you know, he has a better position than if he had won by one on the first ballot and had agreed to a rules change that would allow him to be taken out by the vote of just one person uh, bringing it to the floor. Rick, what do you think? I think he's going to have to reassess his options in a big way. We just heard from uh, Congressman Donalds, the one who has now flipped sides, uh, the only change in votes. He is now calling for a recess and a huddle to re-strategize. Look, McCarthy's going to have to pull something out right now. You can't just keep doing the same thing and expect you're going to have a different outcome. These 19, now 20 holdouts are not going anywhere. And keep in mind, they only have to have five. It's not a fair fight if the other side is only trying to deny something. So they have leverage in these negotiations. McCarthy's trying to pretend as if that didn't exist. 
going ahead, trying to keep his his, his folks on, on task as much as possible. But he has to acknowledge this reality or you're going to see more frustration grow in Republican ranks. If he's able to survive this, I think Senator Heitkamp is right. He might be stronger for the experience. But I do not see a path right now. And frankly, I'm surprised. I thought there would be a more of a crack among the, those 19 and now 20 holdouts. That but the people wondering why won't like what they object why won't they try to flip votes to Hakeem Jeffries? No Republican will vote for a fucking Democrat. It is infinitely more likely that a Democrat could potentially vote for a Republican for Speaker of the House, but no Republicans doing that around uh, just one member being able to, to essentially have a vote of no confidence and oust him with a, with a simple majority vote. That's out there for the taking. But do you want a speakership where that exists? McCarthy's answer to that has been no. He called out the members of Astrovid, say, saying they've been selfish on this, saying that calling him out for trying to work with Democrats. Uh, McCarthy has tried to play the confident hand in this, that he's got this. But, you know, five hours plus now of voting with no resolution doesn't do a lot to fuel confidence. Uh, and it's about more than a, than a bad first impression. This is going to be an extremely difficult Republican majority to govern with this very narrow majority and an empowered small band of, uh, of members who might feel like they've got the opportunity to block him at any turn. So how much longer, Rick, will the House stay in session today? Could they stay in session today? Like, If you think that any Republican on the planet is going to vote for a black dude from New York who was Nancy Pelosi's handpicked candidate for Speaker of the House? You have to be out of your mind, okay? There is like, they wouldn't even vote for uh, someone like Henry Cuellar, right? But like, they definitely aren't going to vote for a guy who is, again, black from New York and is Nancy Pelosi's like main guy. No shot. You feel like you've got some momentum on your side and you go from 19 to 20. Maybe you can get that up to 21, 22 to really send a message uh, that I, I don't know who wants it right now. Who wants to call that time out? Um, uh, like you don't got it right. Like at what yeah. point Kernaki. does that reality check happen? Because McCarthy to this point has seemed extremely dug in. The people opposing him have seemed extremely dug in. Well, that's a recipe for yet another stalemate. Yeah, and I think that's part of the problem, Hallie, because Kevin McCarthy has been so insistent that he was going to see this through until the very end that they're really... My man said Quayar. Wait, what is it? How do you say... How do you say Henry... Wait, what? I said it right. What the fuck? Queller! Is that what you want me to say? Henry Queller! I said it right, and you still fucking made fun of me. What is wrong with you, man? Chat's so weird! Henry Queller, brother, that's how you say it, God damn it! He's in Texas, not Mexico! Even a small crack for them to wiggle through uh, to open up uh, for them to take the speakership. So, you know, this idea that if, well, if Kevin McCarthy doesn't say want to right, do the police just raises his hand, that automatically Henry there's going to be 218 votes, that potentially could happen, but we, no one's done that vote count yet. We don't know for sure if that would happen. And we spend a lot of time talking about, you know, the five dissenting conservative Republicans. And we don't spend as much time talking about the much larger universe uh, of governing Republicans that actually want to get something done. Maybe right. Steve Scalise have, has enough of those uh, that would vote for him. But there are quite a few people that are very loyal to Kevin McCarthy. So uh, that it's not as if there's a white knight ready to ride in here That's and right. solve all these problems for Republicans. They, they've still had a lot of work to do to get to that point. And just so people know, they're going to keep doing this. They're going to keep voting until a speaker is named, right? So, like, we say the banner on our screen says he appears to lose the third vote. We could say appears was fourth vote, fifth vote. Like, who knows yeah. how many votes it could take at this point? And it does speak more broadly here, Ryan, to the, to the issue that we are seeing play out, which is this is the Republican civil war in some ways writ large, right? Because Kevin McCarthy is a loyalist to former President Donald Trump. So are the people who are opposing him. So this isn't like yeah. establishment Republicans versus, like, MAGA Republicans. These are all the same, you know, ideological. Um, yeah. ideologically aligned in some ways, right? I mean, some are more conservative than others, but they're all sort of Trump Republicans that we're talking about here. Yep. And the reason why this is so difficult for Kevin McCarthy is you, you go back to the midterms, right? Mm -hmm. If more Republicans had gone up in races who were considered to be electable and appealed more to a broader swath of voters, Kevin McCarthy would have a bigger majority and he wouldn't have to worry about this stuff. I mean, this all goes back to sort of the, the, the Trump of it all, if you will.
Yeah, and if you think this is ugly, uh, Hallie, at some point they're going to get through this, but it's setting the stage for the next two years. Imagine this fight over picking something as simple as the next Speaker of the House and insert the debt ceiling, insert a running out of government funding, and, and just kind of envision what that would look like when you have a, a hardline group of Republicans that are willing to essentially just blow the whole thing up in favor of their needs. Uh, this is, could be like what this Republican conference looks like for the next two years. Ryan Nobles, thank you very much. Uh, I know you're standing by, ready to bring us updates throughout the evening. We appreciate it. There's more going on today than just the fight for speaker. Coming up in the breakdown, and a little bit later on in the show, we'll look at the diverse group of lawmakers who will serve when the new Congress... It is unclear as to what that means, but there's conversations about adjourning. When, how long does that adjournment last? How long is that break for? They're just that basically going to adjourn. That's and it. Under the like, if this doesn't get resolved. I should say the lack thereof, because until you elect a speaker, typically there are, technically there are no rules in the House. Um, you have to pick a date and time to adjourn to. You can't just adjourn and say, we'll come back when we all want to. You have to say, the House is adjourned until this date at this time. So if there is some kind of a break that lawmakers take, we will know when they're coming back. And that will put lawmakers on the clock. It will put McCarthy's team on the clock. It will put the Never McCarthy group on the clock because they've got to either whip votes, get people on board with them, or at least in the case of the Never McCarthy group, stay together for however long that break is and not bend or break and not get in anybody else's boat, stay in your boat. Um, in order to um, uh, to withstand anything that might come in the next few hours. To the new members, this is a long process, and it, it, this is a day of typical celebration. You bring your family, you're sworn into Congress. Voting for Speaker is pro forma. It's par for the course. Everybody usually knows who's going to be the next Speaker of the House. Eh, well, Republicans are... Republicans have shown already in January 6th that, like, they love disrupting... <coughs> symbolic events and making a big political show of it so <laughs> not today looking who your next speaker of the house is going to be but also they are watching history play out uh, with their very own eyes as the clerk prepares here uh, it appears to read the results of the third vote here let's listen in Wow, thank you. This is great. I'm glad we're listening in. Does uh, start to to speak again, Jay? We'll we'll, we'll take it, of course, um, to hear kind of the final uh, vote tally on the third speaker vote there. That uh, Kevin McCarthy McCarthy uh, still did not win, which means it's going to go into a fourth round. And of course, we're waiting to see if they're going to vote to adjourn, and then you'd have to set a date on when to come back. Uh, but Jay, I mean, that begs the question: if you can't, if you can't come to a consensus on who to vote for for speaker how are you going to come together right now to vote on an adjournment and then set a date for when they're going to come back and try this again and that's the exact issue that the, the amount of legislation that is truly like life-changing that gets passed or is pushed aside specifically because of like legislator personal schedules holiday travel is mind-boggling so they're wrong if they adjourn right now they will immediately find uh unity on exactly when to uh you know restart congress they fucking love this shit bro this is what they live for they're so good at like not doing their fucking job But at least the Democrats are dead set against adjourning to help the GOP. That's fucking awesome. Love that. Don't do it. Stay strong, brothers. Okay. Stay strong. How noon 
today when the House started voting. He hasn't convinced anyone that wasn't for him to be for him. He's only lost one lawmaker, Byron Donalds, and now you've got 20 Republicans saying that they do not want to back Kevin McCarthy. Is there anything that he can offer to change the calculus here? As I've been saying, Darvin you know, Ham says his plan is to keep leading on LeBron James. Five. I just want to ride him. One of them told me as early as last night that they didn't believe there was any concern. What's wrong with McCarthy that? Could make There's nothing wrong. I, I want to ride him. What? Never McCarthy lawmakers. So the proof I'd say the same the thing. Few hours because we are getting to that point here where uh, you are really putting the strains on this process because, again, you have not seen lawmakers confront something like this uh, for more than 100 years. And, and as I'm speaking, by the way, and they just cut away from it uh, on the House feed, but uh, Matt Gates is speaking with members on the floor, so you're seeing Yes, dude, Nathan I am Carthy, LaDick Ryder, okay? I don't care. Members. Uh, there is Matt Gates on the House floor. So you're seeing that Stop lebating. <laughs> Kevin Murphy, uh, I can tell you from watching him firsthand, is a master of working the floor of the House of Representatives. When you sit in the gallery of the House and you watch Kevin McCarthy, every time you look up and look back at Kevin McCarthy, he's talking to a new member. So he knows how to work the floor. He knows how to work votes in his favor and try to push votes towards the direction that he wants. But the question that he's confronting now is, is there enough that he can do to push those votes in his direction? Is that talent that he has to whip votes enough or is the rubber going to meet the road at some point here? Is he going to mix my metaphors here, but is he going to run out of road here uh, and eventually have to give in, Kira? Well, Heidi, what do you think? How can Dems help Republicans here? Well, I mean, I think that they're tired and they had parties planned uh, for their swearing in and they are concerned that uh, they're starting to look very, very bad. And so we'll see. And it, I would remind you that the Democrats could vote for a motion to adjourn. So that would be a, I think that's what the Democrats are probably talking about, whether they would support a motion to adjourn if it's made. By the way, this is literally like forced to vote, um, which was like advocated for by uh, Jimmy Dore and everyone else. And as you can tell, like the conclusion in this circumstance is going to be meaningless because ultimately... It doesn't matter. Like, whoever becomes speaker is still going to do the same bullshit. And the Republicans are not going to vote for a Democrat. Let's be real. But they are infinitely more likely to get votes from a uh, Democratic, like, corporate Democrat. Now, this is a war of attrition here. One thing you got to think of... Is, let's say enough. Let's say enough Republicans leave. Kevin McCarthy, you could get Hakeem Jeffries as speaker. Has received two hundred and two. The Honorable Jim Jordan of the state of Ohio has received twenty. No person having received the majority of the whole number of votes cast by surname, a speaker has not been elected. For what purpose does the gentleman from Oklahoma rise? Move to adjourn until noon tomorrow. The question is on the motion. The question is on the motion. All those in favor say aye. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. All those opposed, no. No. What? The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. The motion is adopted. Dude, the Democrats are so stupid! Noon tomorrow. Okay, Jay O'Brien, there you have it. I was... Boo! The Democrats are so fucking useless. They're so fucking stupid. I hate these motherfuckers so much. They're the laziest pieces of shit on the fucking planet, dude. And if you, if you think bipartisanship is dead, just listen to that vote where everybody <laughs> said, yes, we want to go home. Um, because it's been five and a half hours now since the new Congress began, and they are now adjourning. Uh, sun, the sun will set on Washington, D.C. tonight. A new day will begin, and there will not be a Speaker of the House. I have to look back at my records, but I don't even think in 1923 it lasted more than one day. Again, do not quote me on that. I have to check that out. I know the longest one was in the 1850s. That lasted... Nobody wants to work anymore, dude. 
Nobody wants to fucking work anymore. I mean, this is crazy. These lazy fucks, dude. These old pieces of shit. Are you fucking joking? Like, you're really gonna... That's it? Five and a half hours? Bitch, that's a half day for me. Certainly will. Uh, is there some kind of plan that emerges from McCarthy and his team to <laughs> work together? One of the chats said they're quiet quitting. Yeah, Republicans Democrats are quiet are quitting, dude! McCarthy to change their minds. He can only afford to lose four votes. Yo, this shit is actually people, super so whack, though. Him, or 20 Republicans, rather, so they don't want him to be the Speaker of the House. And the Never McCarthy group has said to me in the past, prior to this vote, as they were talking about their plans, that their biggest position in all of this is what's called quote unquote pain resistance meaning they believe that when there is an adjournment again they were speaking in the future tense because they were making their plans weeks ago they believed that when there was an adjournment they would be subject to a lot of pressure from McCarthy from Republican leaders even perhaps from former President Trump who has been both publicly and privately supporting McCarthy for speaker so you can expect that pressure campaign if it exists to churn up overnight and to put the pressure on some of those lawmakers resisting Kevin McCarthy if it does emerge that Kevin McCarthy is going to stay in this fight and still try to be Speaker of the House. So this is going to be a, a quiet night for those who are watching the House floor. There's going to be nothing going on there. But if you're a member of Congress or a member of the press or interested in this process, this is going to be a very active night where we try to figure out by noon tomorrow is there some kind of consensus pick for Speaker of the House amongst the Republicans or Kevin McCarthy? Can he pull this out, Kira? So, Heidi, what does Kevin McCarthy do between now and noon tomorrow? Well, the first thing he has to do if he intends to stay in this is shore up his 202 votes and make sure they're going to stay with him. And so, you know, I think that that he believed he was probably running the risk given fatigue that he would uh, lose another two, three votes. That erosion would really hurt him. And then the saddest part about this is the fact that Democrats just fucking absolutely, you know, threw the, they threw the towel so quick. I mean, I hate them for doing that. Run the clock out. Every fucking second in this circumstance is making the Republicans look worse. But also on top of that, like you have uh, the, the Republican party basically expecting Tucker Carlson to whip the votes for him. Like, that's why they wanted to adjourn. They wanted to adjourn because they're fucking tired. But they also wanted to adjourn because they want Trump to make phone calls. They want Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity to bully them publicly and force them into submission. That's literally why they did this, which is crazy. So, Barbara, the, the next multi-million dollar question is, can Republicans get their ducks in a row by noon tomorrow? Well, I think you're going to see uh, probably Jim Jordan on Fox News tonight, uh, probably saying, listen, I don't want this. I support Kevin McCarthy. And he's going to be saying those 20 votes for him need to be supporting Kevin McCarthy. And he'll go hard on that. I think Fox News has been, you know, you've had people like Mark Levin, you know, pretty hardcore Trumpy person attacking these guys, calling them knuckleheads and other names that Mark Levin is known to do attacking these, uh, you know, Matt Gateses and Lauren Boberts for not supporting McCarthy. So, um, you know, I think that's going to be ratcheted up. Um, so, you know, they've got to, I think, since these guys are the people who like to go on TV, they're performance artists, the place to hit them the hardest is, uh, you know, fr from, the, from the media standpoint. And that's where I think they're probably going to get hit tonight. For this town, um, get the murder. phone calls Our going into them. There's, there's nothing really to do. Bro, they're, they're not talking about it. Jim Jordan can tell them to. Yeah. Fox News is not even talking about it. And by the way, she's saying exactly what I said. She like they're they're waiting, they're waiting for Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity to whip them, dude. I hope they don't. I would never vote for a Freedom Caucus member. Um, and certainly, um, you know, Jim Jordan's strength has been that he's been supporting Kevin McCarthy, not because he's a Freedom Caucus member. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jay, Heidi, Barbara, thank you all, all right, so much. All right, we got a lot Make of news sure to cover, a good folks. Night's sleep okay. Tonight, hydrate. We're gonna fucking move on from this. Uh, first, that is where Damar Hamlin is in critical condition after a cardiac arrest that happened 
uh, last night during an NFL game where he got directly slammed into uh, the, his chest 